Welcome to the Referencing Starter Pack webinar recording for APA 6 Referencing. This topic will be useful for ACAP and HSA students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may want to just watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do the activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. In this session, we're going to look at the what and why of referencing and then how to do in-text referencing and reference lists. So what is referencing? Fundamentally, referencing is saying where you got your information from. You've learnt the information you're going to use in your assignments from books, articles, websites, places like that. We call these sources. Referencing is saying which sources the information comes from. This is also called acknowledging your sources. Here's a question to get you thinking about why referencing is important. Pause the video to answer this one. We actually use referencing for all these reasons together, so D is the most correct. The flip side of referencing is plagiarism. When you don't acknowledge where you got your information in the correct way, you're committing plagiarism. This can include copying or buying an assignment, not referencing information or images, not referencing quotes or paraphrases, and not doing your bit in a group assignment. Don't freak out about plagiarism when you start your studies though. You're given some leeway as a new student. If you're not referencing correctly when you're new, you'll be given feedback and support to improve. If you continue to plagiarise though, you'll start getting into trouble. OK, so let's look at in-text referencing. That just means the referencing we do in the assignment proper, not the reference list, which comes at the end. Here's an example of information from a journal article about emotional intelligence by Solovia Mayer. Below is a section from a student's essay where they have used the information from Solovian Mayer. Pause the recording and think about these questions. So, for question one, no, the student hasn't changed the words from the source. Using exact words from a source is called quoting, and this is therefore a quotation or a quote. For question two, we can see that the surnames of the authors have been added to the student essay along with the year the article was published and the page number where the quote came from. There are also quotation marks at the beginning and end of the quote. This signals to the reader that this is indeed the same words as the original. Now let's look at two different ways of setting up your in-text referencing. You can put the information from the source first and then the author's surnames, year and page number. Or you can put the author's names first, then the year, the page number in this case goes at the end of the quote. In the author first format, the author's names are part of your sentence, so they're not in brackets and you use the word and rather than the symbol for and. Here's another quote to look at. Pause the video if you want to read this one. Now it's your turn to practice. In blue we have some information that comes from this book. What in-text referencing would you put with this quote? Pause to do the activity. So, there are two possible answers. Either you can put the authors first, followed by the year in brackets and the page number in brackets at the end. Don't forget quotation marks. You can see here that when you put a quote in the middle of a sentence, you should change the first letter to lowercase if necessary. Or you can put the information first in quotation marks, then put the author's names, year and page number all in brackets at the end. The full stop always goes after the brackets at the end of the sentence. OK, so now you know all about quotes, I'm going to tell you that a few quotes in an assignment is great, but you don't want too many. Lots of quotes can make your assignment difficult to read and they don't show you understand the information, only that you can copy it. So you need to explain most of the information you get from sources in your own way, and that's called paraphrasing. Here we have information from a book, this time by Kaplan and Sadek. Then another segment from the student's essay. Pause the recording and think about these questions. Did you notice that the student has explained the information in their own way, in their own words, although the meaning is the same? That's paraphrasing. 
The referencing information is the author's surnames and the year of publication. No page number and no quotation marks. Paraphrases are often summaries of more than one page of a source, so putting a page number for paraphrases is not as helpful as for quotes. You can put paraphrases in information first and author first formats, just like you can for quotes. Here's another example of a paraphrase and it's in text referencing. Pause to take a look. OK, over to you again. How would you do the in text referencing for this paraphrased information? Pause the recording. Just like for a quote, for paraphrased information you have two options. Putting the author first or putting the information first. Neither of these approaches is more correct than the other and most academic authors vary which one they use within one document. However, if the information is more important than the author, you may choose to use information first. If the author is important, you may choose author first, but that's not a hard and fast rule. All the information from sources that you include in your assignment should be referenced. Most of the time, you should be using paraphrases of the information with only a few quotes. Now we're going to use the Quick Guide to Referencing to learn how to do a reference list. You can find the Quick Guide on the Learning Support website here. Here are the steps to doing your reference list. Firstly, start on a new page at the end of your assignment and give it the title References. Then work out what type of source you're using. Is it a book, a journal article, a website, etc. Then find the example of that source in the Quick Guide. Copy the order of information and the formatting of the example in the Quick Guide and use that to format the information on your own source. Let's try it out. Let's say I'm using information from a book I found in the Navitas library. Looking at the quick guide, I can see that for a book, I need the author's surname and initial, year, title, edition number if there is one, location of publication, and publisher's name. Let's look at my book. I found it in the Navitas library using the multi-search tool. Here's the multi-search search, and here's the book. When I click on the Details tab here, I can see the author's surname and initials, Gladding ST, the year, 2005, the book title, Counselling Theories, Essential Concepts and Applications, the location of publication, Upper Saddle River NJ, which is in New Jersey in the USA, the publisher is Pearson Merrill Prentice Hall. If the location is within the USA, you use the city and two-letter US state code. For books published outside the USA, use the city and country, for example, Sydney, Australia. I can put all that information together into a reference list entry. A trick for you though, if I click on this Actions tab here, I get an option called Citation. Click on this and I can choose APA and then copy and paste the reference list entry into my reference list. Be careful with these citation tools though, as the information and formatting is not always 100% right. Always double check what you get against the Quick Guide or Learning Support website. I'll show you the correct formatting in a tick. You can also get the information you need to reference a book from the cover page and title of the physical book. The title page is located a page or two into the book. For each type of source, the information and formatting for the reference list differs a bit. Always check with the Quick Guide or the Learning Support website. The formatting of your reference list is important. You need a title, which is references. The sources should be listed alphabetically by surname. Everything is double spaced. Times New Roman font, size 12. And the second and subsequent lines of the same entries should be indented like this. We haven't been able to cover everything about referencing here, but there is more information in the Quick Guide and on the Learning Support website. The APA-style website is also helpful. 
There's another video on referencing for online sources that will be helpful too. Get in touch with us at Learning Support if you have any queries or need specific advice about an assignment you're writing. Good luck with your studies.